Well, good evening, everybody. I'm so delighted to be here in Tampa. My understanding is I'm in the most important county in America. Yeah. <laughs> now, Gladys may have told you that I'm going to be here every day between now and the election. That's not quite accurate. <laughs> 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 you have other places to go and a few things that bring me back to D.C., but I'm thrilled to be here for today. I'm really excited about hearing from the President in a little while. But I really wanted to come, first of all, and just say thank you. Uh, the work that's going on throughout the state of Florida, but particularly right here in the epicenter of Florida, is just amazing. I've met uh, folks in four different staff offices today. I've been talking to these incredible team leaders and fellows and volunteers and regional organizers. and. I just see this energy. Uh, first of all, your voter registration numbers throughout the state are amazing. Doubling the number. You know, as Democrats, we do believe that more people voting is a good thing. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 Republicans Amen. seem to believe that subtracting voters mm -hmm. is a good thing, but we think in a democracy, everybody should have a voice and a vote. And so that work is just incredibly important. Every day between now and Election Day, three weeks from today, is Election Day. Here in Florida, here in Hillsborough County, going to the clerk's office asking for a ballot, dropping it in, can be done any day of the week. And that's really important to get the word out and make sure people don't wait until the 6th of November because who knows what the weather's going to be like or what could happen. The earlier they vote, the better off we are. But we know that these next three weeks are critical. And you're in a situation where there's an avalanche of advertising. And it all is negative. You know, one mistruth after another. But you know what I find? Whether I'm here in Florida or in Wisconsin or in Colorado or New Hampshire, Ohio, um, people have really gotten sick and tired of what's coming across the airwaves on TV. They're not listening anymore to the television, but they will listen to you. Mm -hmm. They listen to their neighbors, they listen to their friends, they listen to their family members, they listen to people who they think understand their lives, understand their challenges. So your voices, which has always been important, are more important now than they've ever been because people have tuned out the rest of the noise and they will listen to you. And there's still people who don't know what's at stake. They don't understand the work that this president has done to rebuild the economy, to get 31 straight months of job growth, to have 5.2 million private sector jobs, lowest unemployment since the month he was sworn into office, since January of 2009, we're now below 8%. Now, is that where the president thinks we need to be at the end of the day? You bet not. But is that a lot better off than when he took office in January of nine? You bet it is. That's true. And we need to remind people of that, that there's a great deal of difference between what we're looking at now and where we were then. There's a great deal of difference in these two candidates, clearly about their approach to health care, something I work on a little now. <laughs> um, the one good thing, Mitt Romney and I were elected governors the same year, so I know Mitt Romney. I worked with Mitt Romney. The one good thing I thought he did as governor was actually pass a health care bill to get it signed into law. He seems to not running away recognize from that anymore. But clearly the president believes that affordable, available health care for everybody. And for those of you in the room who are women, it will be illegal for insurance companies to charge us more than men. Being a woman will no longer be a pre-existing condition. For the first time ever, insurance policies will include services that women actually need. So before, not only could we be charged 50% more, totally legally, for the same policy as a man, but the services that women needed weren't even included. So then you paid 100% out of your pocket for contraception, or domestic violence screening, or lactation help and support, or often mental health services, or maternity services, any number of needs that women had. That, those days are over. But Romney clearly wants to go back to the point where insurance companies could pick and choose who gets coverage and who doesn't. 
give employers the control over what their employees have as their health services. We know why. Defund Planned Parenthood, which serves mm -hmm. not only hundreds of thousands of Florida women, but millions of women all over this country for not only contraception, but breast cancer screening and cervical cancer screening and well woman visits, that all would be gone. And that's what he's promised to. Who knows what he'll say tonight? So I'm just reminding you of his position. <laughs> this is what the guy stands he for, might right? swap again. This is what he's been saying for the last six years that he's been running back for president. The 50s. We know about his $5 trillion tax plan. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, as Bill Clinton says, it's about the arithmetic. Yeah, it's it's it. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot execute the tax breaks that he's talking about and not add up to $5 trillion. But what he won't tell you is he won't tell you about his own taxes. And more importantly, he won't tell you what he's going to do with your taxes. He won't tell you how he's going to pay for that $5 trillion because the only way to pay for it is to come after deductions that are important to middle class families. Your mortgage deduction, your health care deduction has to go or you can't, you can't get there. 